For as far back as I can remember, I was told I was just like my father. How can you be like someone you never knew? I was born on his birthday, so I could never forget him. But most important, how could he forget me? And just like King Arthur and Camelot, I grew up with folk tales of the man, but not the truth of the man. I never knew the heart and soul of my father, but all I had was these stories. How he loved Cadillacs and nice suits. How he sang like an angel, but had the temper like the devil himself. But most of all, my father loved ladies. And from what I heard, he had plenty of them. You talk to your mom, do what you gotta do. What do you mean I gotta go? I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Yes, I'm going. What are you talking about running the damn street? I'm doing what I got to do. You ain't doing shit. Listen, man, I'm getting the hell out of here. Listen, I can't do this no more. What listen, can't you do, be a man? Do what you got to do. Be a man. You know what I'm saying? Look, 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 listen, I got to go, man. Would you stop touching? I'm not touching Okay, you. move, move, move. Listen, I'm not putting up with your shit. I'm not putting up with your shit. I'm not putting up with your shit. They say Arthur James never settled in one place, but he always had some place to go. person that you never met. Well, I mean, I've spoken to him, but you never met face to face in 41 years. You know, how do you feel about that? I mean, I'm excited, you know. Uh, I got a lot of mixed emotions going on. But I just, I just want to see my dad, you know what I'm saying? That's, I just want to see my dad, you know. I want to see if I, if I got any traits like him. I mean, everybody say I do, but, you know. I want to embrace my brothers and sisters, AJ, Rennie, Peaches, Gucci, Lisa, and, and the rest of them I never met before. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just really pray that this goes the way that, you know, I'm looking forward for it to go. Pray that God ordains it. It's 41 years in the making. Now, the first thing I had to do to start off my journey it's find two friends to help me document everything that was about to take place. That's when I called in my boy Mufi. And in turn, he called in our boy Big Moot. Both of these brothers had the same integrity that I had. And who better to help me tell my story than them? Only, like really, for one, try to get the family back closer. You know what I mean? To the point where it's all peace with everybody as far as the, the kids are concerned, because I know it's a lot of resentment. Everybody, like I said, my sister, you got some of my sisters that just can't stand my father completely. I look at my charm, right? Mm -hmm. I get that from my father. Oh, shit. So how you survive all that? <laughs> you stupid, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, as far as swag and all that, I get from my pop. So you can't be mad. But as a female, you know, they mad because they grew up with a, with the, you know the first man that your father's supposed to be the first man as a female that that you encounter and how you you know meet men. Mm -hmm. So if your father ain't doing what he need to do as a man, then every any man that you meet, you know if you meet a drug dealer that's beating your behind, 
you never had a father. So you think that's the norm. It's supposed to happen. Yeah. You don't know how to escape it. So, you know, I know it's... You can show me love. Exactly. Um, so I know there's a lot of resentment with my sister. So hopefully we can find some peace and some, some resolve with that. Yeah, I turned to the, into, into the parking lot on the right, the first one. Are you in the one in the left? Okay. Wait a minute. I'm coming right down now. Alright. Alright. Now people, here's my story. This is the only known existing picture I had of my father. My Aunt Mary teases me to this day because I was the only baby boy she knew that had a bonnet on his head during his christening. Now these are my siblings. Rumor has it though, that there are actually 10 more siblings that we don't even know anything about. And these are the only ones I know about. Bang, and I can remember when Rennie knocked on my door. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, you know, I hear knock at the door. This was me, me, me and two, my sister shared a yeah. condo out there at the uh, Four Mile Run Drive. He knocked on the door. And I'm like, he said, hey. I said, yeah, can I help you? He said, yeah, I'm your brother. I'm like, what? <laughs> then I looked at him, he smiled. Uh, I said, yeah, you got to be my brother because yeah. you look just like your sister. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. But you, you and Pooch grew up together, right? Yeah, me, Pooch, uh, Lisa, and Teresa. Okay. So in that process, you said Pop used to come in and scoop you up at the time. Yeah, yeah. And like I say, you, it, it's not that the, the girls that were really, they were really, they, they weren't really angry at him. Right. They wanted attention from him. Right. That's that's what it was about. They actually loved him, man. But I mean, but when he came, he felt so resentful against them because he he thought that they, they hated him. And I kept trying to tell him, look, these are your girls, father. They don't hate you. You know what I'm saying? You're your father. Right. You just have to show, you know, spend a little time with them too. You know, you just can't come and get me and blah blah blah. <laughs> you know, but every, but every time he do that, mm. you know what I'm talking about? It just it just like it just puts. You know what I'm talking about? An edge on their, you know, opinion of him, man. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. he would come scoop me up, take me around, introduce me to everybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you can imagine meeting relatives that you just didn't even know you had, man. You know yeah. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, I think I, I was meeting everybody. Yeah. Like Billy, I mean, man, I was meeting so many people in Colonel, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh. All right, but you know, but, but but that's how it is. See, mm -hmm. when you don't grow up around your father, you don't know who your relatives are. You exactly. know what I mean? Exactly. You know, it's exactly. a funny thing. You you see cousins that you don't even know your cousins, but mm -hmm. you don't like. You know, I've always been in law enforcement. Right. They see your your name tag. But like, man, you you James. Uh, I was there. Man, you got a father in the valley. I said, yeah, man, I'm your cousin, man. I'm like, like what? <laughs> you know, you're shaking the head. <laughs> he no. said, man, you got a boatload of family members, man, all over the place, man. That's I'm crazy. Like, man, 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 that's crazy, man. Yeah. Man, man. Yeah. So that's what it's pretty much been like to me, man. You know. So you had you had that that security in knowing that pop loved you. I mean, you know, it's, it, 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 it wasn't, a, wasn't a point that I know that Pop loved me, man. I was just trying to embrace him, man, right. and, and just get him to understand. What happened between you and my mother is between you and my mother. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You are my father. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yes, you know, and I had to be, I've always reserved the respect for him mm -hmm. as my father. Man. I never hated him, man. I mean, at any point in my life, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even, 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 even growing up, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, a lot of things that you go through in life, man, you know what I'm saying? You need your father, like your first fight. Yeah. Stuff like yeah. that. You know, boy, go back out there. You know, don't come up here in no tears and stuff. Yeah. 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 You know, and the only one you, only, only recourse you got to, to reach out to was moms, mm -hmm. your aunt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, or even, you know, your, your, your aunt's friend or yeah. somebody. You yeah. know, it's all females. Exactly. 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 And I mean, you, you know, females, they do what they do. They're going to console you all. They're there. But your father, <laughs> he, he'll kick you in your behind. Yeah. Right? You're going back out there. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it don't come back. They'll patch your back after yeah. you, get, you, you get it done. There you now after that long conversation and plenty of laughter with my big brother Arthur that night, Mufi Mook and I decided to retire to our hotel rooms to get some rest to prepare for the next day. However, that morning, 
I was full of anxiety. See, when I was growing up, I always thought the day that I was going to meet my father, I was going to punch him in the face and beat him up for not being there for me when I was a child. So all these thoughts and mixed emotions was going all through me. I couldn't believe it. Until I finally met him. I finally embraced him. Until I looked at him and saw myself. And everything that I felt and thought about him kind of took its own course. And I didn't feel the anxiety anymore. I decided to follow my father and my big brother down to my sister Poochie's house. And once we got there, <laughs> the party really began. I saw all my family members eating, laughing, enjoying one another and having a great time. And then I got the chance to meet the brothers and sisters I didn't know and those I did. I am Gwendolyn James Kerr, formerly known as Gwendolyn James, and the third oldest child of Arthur James Sr. Arthur James, in my own opinion, is someone that my mother told me that was my father when I was about, maybe about nine years old. Yeah, I was told that he was my father, in my personal opinion. He's a sperm donor, in my personal opinion. And this is not, you know, yeah. To, to be mean or anything, I'm just keeping it real. When I grew up with my brother, which is Arthur James Jr., and my sister, Rosalind Rolisa James, and then my baby sister, which is Teresa Veronica Lott. Now, her father raised all of us, which is the father that I consider as my father. His name is Thomas Ross Lott. I can recall seeing him maybe twice when I was a little girl. And the second time that I saw him, we actually got into it. Because um, I called him Arthur, which is, that's his name. And yeah. He wanted me to call him Dad. And I don't consider him as a dad, so he threatened to beat me with a belt. And how old was you then? I was about 12 years old. He had threatened to beat me with the belt. Okay. And he's like, I am your dad. And I was like, no, you're Arthur to me. And um, he was like, well, I'm gonna tie you up with this belt. That's what, the, those were his exact words. I don't know if he can recall that, but you know, when someone says that to you as a child, you can always remember that. That's gonna always stick with you. Right. And he said, I'm gonna tie you up with this belt. And I said to him, my father Lawrence, it's gonna tie you up with the belt if you put your hands on me. That was when my eyes at first came. He always favored my brother. It was like the girls didn't exist. And I have always shared that with my brother and my mother. Um, when he would come around, which wasn't that often, um, way, in, way until adult, he, he always favored my brother, AJ. Um, I can recall one time he came around when we were grown and almost grown, we were teenagers. He had a bag of clothes for him, and he always came with something for my brother, AJ. But nothing, never for the girls. It was like, we just didn't exist. And for the longest, he didn't claim me as his child. He didn't claim me as his child. He called one day to the house, and I answered the phone. <clears throat> and he was like, can I speak to Gwen? Which is, I'm named after my mother. Her name is Gwendolyn. My name is Gwendolyn. So back in the household, we were like big Gwendolyn, little Gwen. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, 
stop playing. Child, put your mother on the phone. I said, well, big Gwen, a little Gwen. And he was like, put your mother on the phone. So my mother got on the phone and she started fussing at him immediately because mm -hmm. she told him that it was embarrassing to not know your child's name. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that I was named Gwendolyn because all he knew me as, as Tammy, which was a nickname. Wow. When the father is not there, and for little girls in particular, mm -hmm. they try to look for love in other areas. Mm -hmm. So I went through multiple relationships um, at a young age as far as dating this person. I also was a mean little, <laughs> a mean woman. <laughs> oh, I was one of those women that just didn't play. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was mean to a lot of men, very mm -hmm. mean, yeah. And I knew it extended because mm -hmm. I was raised without my biological father. Peace. I am Peaches. My real name is Katrina. And I am Arthur James Dorley. One of them. Lord James Holiday. I don't rock that. I don't I go by Rennie. That's what the family gave me. So that's who I am. I have a cousin. Named Shonda, her father James introduced me to my father. Somehow he knew he was in contact with them living in North Virginia. So they were able to meet up at some, I don't know what park it was. And um, that was my first time seeing him. When I was younger, I really didn't miss him being in my life at a certain point because I was just used to it being my mother in me. And then, like, maybe at 10 or 11, I, that's when I asked, you know, like, where's my father? Because I saw everyone else with a father. So um, she told me who he was. I don't know if she knew how to get in contact with him at that point. So um, we just pretty much left it at that. So one summer, when I stayed with my aunt in Alexandria, that's when my um, my cousin's father introduced me to my father. So that's how I went with him. I met my pop when I was 12. And uh, true story right now, uh, he had a, you know, the trench leather joint, hat with the feather to the side, mm. clean, you know, always clean, suited up. And he says to me, son, you got a father who loves you. So it wasn't him that kept me away. It was my mother sheltering me, thinking maybe a lifestyle that maybe not fit for me at the age of 12, you know, uh, didn't want me to have nothing to do. But um, even though I was away from my father and grew up without him, I basically grew up as a young man and learned a way to be a young man at an early age. Um, so really, I love Pop from a distance, but he came around. And when he did come around, he would give me gifts. Not to say, you know, oh, this is for me not being here, but he would give me things to say, you know what, I'm your father, you know, your mother doesn't want me around, but yo, take this. This one, this is right, this is on the love. And you know, I appreciate that because it made me feel like, you know, even though he couldn't be there, he gave me a token to say, you know what, Pop gave me this, I'm gonna hold on to this. So, really. But to this very day, the, the man changed his lifestyle, you understand, I mean, it's possible for everybody to change your life, you know, and um, I give everything to him, you know, he's, he's in church, he's doing everything the right way. So I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling all that right now. The first three, they had the advantage of having them in his, in their lives. So, you know, he might have been there more consistently or maybe not. I agree with that. But he gave them what we lacked. He didn't give us that. Nah. So you make these children, yeah. but... How are you affecting them? What, what is your vision for them and, you know, for the future? What do you want them to be? Do you want them to be like you in your present state? Like this would be the, this would be what I would say, you know, to the old author. Well, I'm not going to say the old author, but years ago. And for now, I would say you need to atone with your children. You need to be present in your children's lives and your grandchildren's lives and be sincere about it. I am Giselle Taylor Daniels. I'm 
the daughter of Arthur James. I'm Mark Owens. I'm the grandson of Arthur James. My name is Sean Ragnar, Jr. Uh, the grandson of Arthur James is my son, Sean Amir Ragnar. He's also well, he's, he's the great grand, 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 grand child of Arthur James. To this day, I call Arthur Arthur. <laughs> We don't, you know, we don't have a report as daughter and father. Um, I was the more outspoken one. I will voice my opinion on how I felt. He didn't agree, but um, in my older years, what I am learning, um, I have learned that individuals, we put so much on them, but not seeing it from their side. Um, and as I got older, I've learned to accept him, compensate for him, but I, I mean, I was still on father. If someone was to say, is that your father? Of course I'd say that's my father, but my father. another man raised me. AJ, I can't say back when I met him, young, because like I said, when my mom, my mom, and Gwen were married to Arthur at the same time. And they found out he, through military. So, I, I mean, from birth, I've always been a part of them. So, like I said, AJ is always, and still is, and still is. He, um, he gave me away on my way. Mm -hmm. Both him, my older brother Mike, and my two sons and my grandson. Mm -hmm. Till this day. Well, my father was incarcerated when I was younger. Uh, he was in the streets, so, you know what I'm saying? We built a relationship. He probably really mended our relationship probably when I turned about 21 on the strength of my son, honestly. Uh, the relationship has become a lot better. Um, but, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I just, when I see my son, like when I wake up, I just try to do everything I can to make sure he don't have to go through what I want to come up. I get upset to a degree because it's like you don't know if you crossing paths of your brother or sister any day or every day. Like I'm told we got another brother out here. Um, he works somewhere in D.C. I work in D.C. He's working, um, I think they say something like case management, social worker, whatever. I work downstairs from a place that do social service, social security. I myself work in the medical field. So it's like, you don't know who talking to your sibling. And I'll be honest with you, if you look anything like any of mine, I'm gonna ask you, where are you from? <laughs> who are your parents? <laughs> but um, I welcome all my brothers and sisters. I have no problem with that. Um, Family is, is important to me. I'm very family oriented. Um, just like today, they say, "Hey, Tony's coming to town. He want to do a documentary." I'm like, "Oh, I gotta go to work." But I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> I was on grandma duties last night and had to get up and go to work, but I'm here. That's for any of my family. Come on, thank you for that. Sir, we would like for you to state your name. This is the author, Jesse James. All right. And where are you originally from? Uh, just Virginia. I'm originally born, raised in Washington, moved to Virginia. Washington, right. D.C. is my home. So you've been in Washington for how long? I mean, I know you live in Half Alabama. of my life. All right. Yeah, I've half been in Virginia. All right. Uh, were you ever in the military? I've been in the Army. And Navy. Navy first, I'm in second. And I got the uh, Navy 1972. I went in the Navy. I got on March 8th, 76. I was in the Army, got uh, out of the Army during the Vietnam War. Then I came on home, stateside, and civilian. It was a very life. So were you ever, so where were you stationed at uh, once you got back home? I was stationed in Fort Sur, Virginia, Norfolk. And uh, during my time as a neighbor, I was stationed in Fort Dix, 
New Jersey. Now, in your vast time, so how old are you again? I'm 69 years old now. I'll be 70 in January, January 8th. So I'll be 70 years old. In your 69 years of life, uh, how many children would you say that uh, you've been able to create and be in their lives? To tell the truth for the matter, I give around a figure and it ain't at all, about 10 children. I don't wait a lot. I don't, the difference I've been in service and out of service, off service, I got about 10 kids. I got 10 kids. I got some that don't know who the father was or what, because I never went back to that time. So I got my 10 kids. And the 10 that you know of, uh, how many can you say that look like you, have characteristics like you, and that you know without a shadow of doubt are your children? All of them. Every last one of them. Every last one of them look like me, act like me, talk like me, like me, period. I've been married but twice in my life. Yeah, twice. And in your opinion, how did those marriages go? Uh, one of the last nine years, I want to last well, close to nine years. It's a long time. But you had to learn the right way to do them, treat them, and no using a don't to be the person that you are. And I learned that. And now I've become a true man of God. I treat everybody with God and respect. It didn't work out because it wasn't a woman's fault. It's my fault. My fault being single. I wanted to be single. The service made me like that. The Navy and Army made me a man and wanted to be single. And I've been single ever since then, and I'm still single right today. So you've been a Navy man, and basically, you learn how to defend the country. Yes, yes. But at the same time, they didn't teach you in the Navy how to nurture and raise a family. They told me how to raise a family. I raised a family best of my ability, as long as I could. Being with the family. But being married, it's not guaranteed that you be together all the time. Being married is a responsibility. It takes two people, not one, two. One of the when the one don't work out, that's a man doing it. He don't work out. The woman that work slid to somebody else behind your back. Ain't nothing you can do but be single. I thought about my kids all the time. I ran into my kids here and there by my traveling. In my traveling, I ran into them. I spoke to them, I spent time with them. We had dinner together, we had lunch together, we did everything together. But I'm still a single man. So I went on about my business. If I was close to them, as I supposed to have been to the parent, the mother, we would have never been apart. But it didn't work out that way. So it left me out there in nobody's fear to judge for my own and do my own thing. That's, that's, that's the only reason why we're perfect. Not because of anything wrong done. Not because I want to have my way, because I had my way all, all, all my life. I want to be a parent. I want to teach my kids wrong and right. I want to do for them. I want them to grow up to be a parent, a leader, a grown person. It didn't work out that way. But I had a father that was never around me too much. I had a father in the booze and the liquor, like to be. His wife, me as a kid, I was a kid, picked up a solar bottle, beat my father in the back to stop him from choking my mother. Came to a hard life. But the life I came to taught me well, taught me how to be strong and be the man I'm today. So he actually did some things in front of you. Yes. 
that was That's somewhat true. disrespectful yes. to your moms and other women around? I told my father if he beat my mother or hit her again, or choke again, I'll kill her. And I meant that. And after beating her in the back, I was more man than any man could be. But my father never bothered me, never touched me. I went on about his business and let my mother live to a life quietness and peaceful. I've been to hell and back to tell you about it. I'm a strong person and I'm a person that makes it in life because I know right from wrong. I had went to jail for a second degree murder charge. And while I was in jail, I learned how to seek God. God came to me in his cell house in jail. I was there to do five years, second degree murder charge. But I didn't do that five years because God came to me. And at that time, they had a rope. You could parole yourself out of the penitentiary into the service. And they paroled me into the army. Gave me a going away party. Gave me a walking party. And I got transferred in the army. And that helped me to be a better person. I went to vets in the hospital. And uh, <clears throat> they found I need a colonoscopy from the rear. And I had a prostate test for cancers. But I got colonoscopy, I got the uh, prostate. It came out flying close. No polyps and no cancer. Ever since that happened to me, ever since the day that happened to me, I've been a changed man. How long do you want to live? I asked God to let me live a long jeopardy life in the 80s. I hope to live to 76. At the end of 76, I feel I would serve God, did everything he wanted me to do. If he got some decision, give it to me. But not, I asked him for 76 years old, gave it to me, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Willing and ready to go. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid. Okay, this is a two-part question. Yeah. First of all, first question. Who is your second born child? Well, to tell you the truth, I honestly don't know. Because <laughs> I had so many of them. But I think I think I think it's you. So I'm your second born child. Yeah, I so. so my next question to you. And you may not know this one since you don't know who the second born is. Can you name all of your kids and not their nicknames, but their no. full names? No. Okay. Be honest with you, okay? I may appear to be the second born because I know a lot of times I, I take the leadership role and it. try to I take the leadership role and try to keep, you know, the closeness with the with my siblings, with all of us, and you know, trying to throw parties and family reunions and things like that. So I may seem like the second born because of my leadership skills, but actually, Lisa is your second born. Oh, okay, Lisa. Rosa. I know it had to be one of y'all. Yes. We had somebody else have a question. Yeah, Peter had a question. The first question is you, by listening to you now, you seem to have your life. Um, on a path that is uh, full of happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. um, but your children, well, I can't speak for the rest of them. I'll speak for myself. I still suffer from you not being in my life all of those years. So while you have this, 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 uh, this happiness, this newfound happiness within your life, I am still left to suffer from that, how do you, as a father, plan to bring about healing and repair to that, or is it just on me? No, I'm telling you, I can understand what you're saying, what you, where you're coming from, but I, at a certain age in my life, 
all y'all developed through me. And they never could be around you to live the life you're just supposed to live. And when I got to be greater than I am being a man, I looked over that life. I should have been there for my kids. I wasn't there for my kids, but it's too late. I can't pick up where I left off at because they're older. They learned, they're here, they're far away from me. They don't need me now, but they do need me some areas. But I can't understand why you still hurt or feel better because I was never around you. I was because never there for you. As a as a a daughter, every daughter needs her father. My mother was there for me in my life and I think Allah God for that. But there was a missing element. And when you have that missing element, that creates a void. That creates a, a hunger in a child to to want to know her father, to want to be around her father, to want to be able to have her father teach her wisdom, teach her okay. knowledge. And so I'm just saying, I'm saying. Okay, well, I want to say one thing to you. That would have been your way, but your mother stopped that. She didn't want us to be together. She didn't want me to help you, to raise you, or anything, because she thought it was out of law. I'm an outlaw. That's the reason why your mother and I are not together now, because she thought it was out law. The man, the way I lived my life, didn't it? She didn't want you around me. And I'm telling you, just like it is. Wasn't my, my mistake that I would left for you. It's your mother. She didn't want me ready. To answer your question. That that gives me some insight and into the answer. Um, I still feel that I understand what you're, what yes. you're saying and coming from, yes. but I still think that that is an excuse because as I got older, when we finally did meet, you did have the opportunity. You knew where I was at. Well, that I had the opportunity, had opportunity to talk to you, but you was in Baltimore and you had a husband that I didn't know about. Then that time, I wanted to see more of you, but I was allowed to see you because you far away from me. I didn't know how to contact you or your husband to make arrangements to come into your life. Okay, my next question is, now that you know that you know we're doing well, I'm doing well, I have children, I have six of your grandchildren, mm -hmm. how do you plan to Repair that relationship because they don't repair. know you. I cannot repair. Do you I can't want repair. to be in their lives? Yes, I like to be around them in their life, but I can't repair. No, it's been too long, and at that time I was a young guy seeking life for myself, and I couldn't be there as a father to them. But I love to be around them, and I love to contribute what I can to help them, because they're my flesh and blood. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Maybe all of my brothers and sisters know I have a son and daughter, um, Samaja, my yeah. daughter, my son, Amon. Yeah. And from a perspective of how we came up without you, mm -hmm. I wanted to say that and I'm not really comfortable or happy. I'm just going to confess this. Yeah. A situation similar happened to me when I thought I had the right person in my life and chose to be with this person. Yeah. Ended up being the wrong person for me. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was I had a son and daughter by a person that doesn't want me in their life. Mm. So. I understand yes. how you feel yes. as a as a dad. Yes. Um, as a son, I feel I have made and have been in my son and daughter's life for them enough to understand yes. the difference between me wanting to be there and being there physically. Yes. Yes. Their mother cutting that off. Yes. So yes. so to justify this whole thing, I just want to say that. Uh, I feel the way you feel. Yes. I miss my son and daughter yes. every day. Yes. But I made sure I put in their life 
that they have a father who loves them Amen. and I've made that attempt to be in their life yes. and not only that later when they're adults no longer under the roof of their mother yes. they can find me all right well spoken well spoken My name is Anthony Kenneth James. From my understanding, I was named that by my father, Arthur James, Arthur Jesse James. Mm -hmm. I share the same exact birthday as Arthur Jesse James, which is January 8th. Uh, I am 41 years old. In the course of 41 years, I have spoken to Arthur James eight times, but I've never seen him. Uh, the stories that I've heard of Arthur James was somewhat of a fictional character that was almost like a pimp player hood superhero. Mm -hmm. uh, he had big hats, mm -hmm. uh, he had Cadillacs, mm -hmm. a lot of women, mm -hmm. and as they say on the street, a lot of racks. But the sad part is he was by himself, which I can never understand. If you have people or women that love you and you have whether 10 or more kids, how could you be by yourself? I could be by myself by being away from them because of the type of people they turn into didn't make me want to be part of their life no more. I had to better my life. All I did was think about drugs, cocaine, marijuana. I had to get away from that. That wasn't a part of me. What I was told by my mother, how I was conceived, was that my father met my mother at my grandparents' church. Mm -hmm. He came in and he sang a song and he said the heavens opened up and a sunlight came down upon him and he was unlike anybody else that was in that church. Something about Arthur James was special and my grandparents gave uh, my mother and my father the best wishes and the blessings. Uh, my father uh, was a great man at that time, but for some strange reason, as the story was told, he moved my mother on an army base. And in the process, when she would look for him on certain times to be home, he was never there. And uh, one day she received a phone call and a lady said, well, you know, your husband is actually married to me. My mother was kind of distraught by that because, you know, she grew up kind of, you know, covered and secure where she didn't know anything about, you know, a man being promiscuous or a man having, you know, having other ladies or, you know, being a womanizer. So, the stories that I got was somewhat confusing. I got one story was my father came home and was drunk and put orange juice and vodka in my baby body. Mm -hmm. The yeah. other story that I got was my mother confronted him about not just one, but she found out it was many women. Mm -hmm. And, uh, decided to put a, a end to the relationship in a violent matter. Your mother came down to the base with another lady. Ernest Chin came there, told the captain that they had two wives and both of them was pregnant. Which Ernest Chin with no more than a girlfriend, but your mother was my wife. Then they sent the settlement 
that she get allotment. The allotment went somewhere else and she never did get the allotment. It was supposed to go to a brainer, but I think it went to the other woman in the street. So it never happened. I never had two eyes the time. <coughs> The one thing about it, I don't want this to seem like it's a bashing match right. to my father. Yes. We're not trying to compare yes. notes. We're just trying to get to the truth of the matter of the, of the things that we went through as children into adulthood that got us to the point where now we're all successful. Now we have the love of God in, in our lives to the point where yes. the mold and the, the chains are broken. <coughs> the essence is still there. Absolutely. It's the yes. whether or not you want to answer mm -hmm. to that call of it again. Mm -hmm. It's whether or not you want to continue to keep that going. Uh, the same thing that puts puts this man into the pattern of now he's 70 years old and he's alone. He's lonely. And though he has the Lord by his side, he still misses something within himself that we've all some way, shape, or form found. You know, we can tell him thank you for the seed. We thank him for, you know, being able to look around and all of us look like him. We talk like him. Yeah. We have, you know, attitudes and expressions <coughs> like him. But at the same time, there are things within us that we just want to say, why? Why? You ever start to maybe God making possible to be that way. And you know what? And that's what I was trying to get to mm -hmm. before, you know, my brother-in-law just expressed the way he spoke. Yes. Everybody has their own way of apology, but it's not an, a verbal apology. It's a, a way of expression. He's expressing his apology by maybe talking on the phone saying, you know, for me, he says, son, I'm, you know, haven't been in your life, but you know, your mother kept you from me. Saying those words to me means your mother kept me from you, but son, I'm sorry. That's the way I look at that. So from that day forward, <coughs> Pop didn't have to worry about ring. <coughs> That's it. I'm there for Pop, whatever. Whatever. And I'm gonna say this too. We all got our own lives to live. We all got our own sins and things to answer to when we leave here. Yes. But it's how you leave here. That's true. And when you leave here, you're making peace with not only yourself, but with God. And I can sit here this whole night and listen to my father. He's made peace with God. Thank you. That's all thank that matters you. to Ren. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I can't do nothing about what was done in the past right. and not done in the past. I'm here to love my father. Yes. That's it. I just want to say this. I understand what you, where you're coming from. My thing is, don't put the blame game and not take accountability. Mm -hmm. That's Ooh, just the that bottom line. Every, 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 time, every time you see. Don't miss the, the accountability the, the part. part. That's it. Yeah, that's true. I, you time. Know, we blame each other, but the blame is not going to solve anything until we become accountable for our actions just, and then we do it. something to change it, to that's make true. it better. That's, that's true. true. That's why we are here. We wanted accountability from Be, you. Because the right. first thing you do is confess. Then you, <laughs> then you repent, <laughs> and then you are forgiven. <laughs> Can I get y'all phone number a piece hey, of dance or something? You that. Yes, sir. I don't <laughs> have it. <laughs> I don't have nothing on me on y'all. Out of the situation with Pop, mm -hmm. you know, Pop and I have been, been, I think I'm the only one that's been more closer to him. Yeah, right. Right. Yes, right. I agree. Yes. I agree to that. And yes. I tell y'all something. So sweet. Your, your, your father loved you all. He always asked about you. I he, do. He just didn't know how to reach out to you because he thought there was a situation that you harbored against him. He, right. he has always told me that. Right. And I will always, and I will always tell you what, Bob, Bob, they love you, they don't hate you. Yeah. You know, and that right. that has always been a fear from him. That's for, right. for him. You know, and maybe me getting with him, calling him up sometime, you know. 
if you call me for anything, if I have it within my power, you know, pop no, I'm there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time. All the time. If I'm not there, the first thing I do is tell them to pop. I'm, 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 I don't have anything. Look, mm -hmm. you know, you might want to call Poochie. You might want to call Poochie. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to call him. So on November 10th, 2013, some of my siblings and I started on our journey to forgive an absentee father. It was a rough road, but at least we made a good start. But some of y'all are saying, well, Tone, it's 2020. Where's the rest of it? Don't worry. It's coming. Tell them the joint is closed, let the good times roll. 